Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today, we're going to ask this fun and fundamental question to hop or not to hop. We're going to be talking about distro hopping. What is it? Why is it? What are people doing? Why is it a big thing? Why is there controversy? All these fun little things. Um, I saw a neat video. Um, Chris Titus Tech today did a video. I think he did it last night where he's talking about just kind of how he's going to stick with one distro and stay on that. Uh, I think he, he said Debian, did he say Debian stable or Debian testing? I forget which one he said. Um, but he said, go ahead and like, he's going to stick on one distro. Distro hopping every couple weeks was really wearing him down and things like that. And I've had a lot of other commentary on the channels as well. And there's a lot of conversation going around about this. And so I wanted to discuss just in a brief little video here to hop or not to hop, what are the pros and the cons of distro hopping on Linux? Now, of course, I did a video not too long ago, it was a few months back though, and it was about why your Linux distro really doesn't matter. And I wanted to bring this up because uh, Chris also talked in his video about the same thing. Your Linux distro really doesn't matter. We don't need to be fighting around going, oh, you should use this instead of that or, or another. Some people really like Debian. Some people really like Ubuntu. Some people really like Mint. Some people really like Manjaro or Arch or Gentoo or whatever else. Whatever Linux distribution you have that works, that you know how to run, manage, and use is exactly what you should be using. Now, there's some people like myself and DistroTube and Chris Titus Tech who do talk about a lot of different distros from time to time. And we do this not because we're wiping everything out necessarily. Well, I don't know about everyone else, but I know I'm not wiping everything out to distro hop to a different distribution. I'm doing it for two primary reasons. Number one is to teach you guys what all is out there. And number two, so I can better learn myself about the different types of distributions. I want to be able to know how to manage something inside of CentOS or, or Ubuntu or Debian or Arch. And so I learn a lot jumping back and forth on a lot of different things. Now, there's some different considerations. One of those is... I have a number of different computers. So you hear me talk about distro hopping. I never change the operating system on the computer I'm recording this on. I built this computer from the ground up to do live streaming and distribution testing in a virtual machine. It's got 12 processing cores, well, 12 processing threads, six cores, 12 threads, and 16 gigs of RAM. And I might upgrade it back up all the way up to 32 soon. Um, it's just that RAM, when I put the computer together, RAM was really expensive. Same exact RAM I have in here is actually about half the prices I bought it for originally. So I might be doing that soon. Um, but that being said, I built this specifically to be able to record high quality videos for you guys on virtual machines without losing system performance. Now I have another computer, which is over here that is just out of screen, that is kind of my distro hopping computer. It's an all-purpose multimedia, mostly multimedia slash um, general purpose computer that doesn't actually ever do much production work, but it does do media files, I'll watch movies, I'll watch videos, I'll write the occasional document, I'll rip the occasional CD, do the, just little odds and ends things around the office. Now that has, it, I, well, it has a Windows uh, 8 disk in it. I don't think it boots anymore. I, I don't know. I haven't seen the Windows operating system on that for at least nine months. It has the other operating system it has inside of it is Linux Mint 19, excuse me, Linux Mint 18.3 KDE. And it has on it right now, I'm running Arch on it. Now I run the distro hopping that I do on that computer is actually done with an a, a external a Western Digital external hard drive. I have a one terabyte external hard drive that I use to bounce the distributions. So I'll run it for a little while, I'll clear it off, put a new distribution. If the whole thing flops on me, I just pull the thing out, boot into Linux Mint, and I use that until I have time to fix it. 
So my office is set up because I'm a work at home tech consultant. My office is set up to be able to do that because I got this computer. I got a Mac down here. I got that computer. I got a Windows computer there. I got a Dell on the deck back behind me and I got two more computers downstairs. I got plenty of things to run with. Not everybody has that. And this is where you start watching the channels. We start, start talking about distro hopping. And then you get the idea that we're wiping our computer every couple of weeks and that causes deep amounts of stress and frustration. And so we don't always want to do that. So in light of this, with a tip of the hat and go take a look at Chris's video, tip of the hat to that, I want to talk about to hop or not to hop. And that is, uh, that is the question. But I, I kind of identified a few different things. <clears throat> when to hop? When do you do a distro hop? This is a great question to have. When do you change your Linux operating system on your computer? And I've identified three primary reasons for doing this. One of these is if you are still looking for your perfect distro. So when I first got started on Linux and I told the story uh, the other day, I started out with Ubuntu and, uh, and I liked Ubuntu. I loved Unity. I thought it was a great operating, like a great desktop environment. Um, Unity was great, but it did not work well with my workflow. Unity was absolutely perfect for this media PC that's next to me. It is the ideal desktop environment for that PC. It's great. It had everything on the side. It was minimalist. It, to use the, uh, the colloquium, it got out of your way, uh, but it gave me access to the things that I need. Uh, really quickly for quick, quickly between the tasks, but it's horrible for my actual work production when I'm doing real work. And this channel is dedicated to teaching you how to do real work on Linux. I'm not all that concerned about all of the odds and ends this way, that way. What can I really do? We need all those guys to, to get this stuff ready and working, but I kind of pick up where they leave off and say, how do you write a book, produce it and publish it on Linux? How do you build a website on Linux? How do you do a book cover on Linux? How do you do all these different real world applications on Linux? That's what I'm most concerned with. All right. So. If you are in that phase and uh, to stop chasing the rabbit and come right back to where I was on my trail, when I first got started, I loved Unity. I, uh, Unity, yeah, I was like, huh. But it didn't jive with my workflow to get my, the rest of my workflow done. And so I was kept on looking around and that's when I found Linux Mint. And Linux Mint is absolutely 100% everything that I want in a distribution. That's why I use it. So number one, if you are still looking for a distro, feel free to keep hopping until you find what is perfect for you. Because that is what's so great about the Linux ecosystem is if you want to do something totally weird with your keyboards exclusively or almost exclusively, you got your, your, um, you know, various windows managers, you got gnome, you got a lot of different options for that. If you're just like me and use a combination of keyboards and mouse constantly, cinnamon is perfect for me. XFCE, Mate, these are good options as well. And then there's some other odds and ends in between. How frequently do you have to change your inputs on your microphones, your cameras, or things like that? Something like Budgie makes that really easy. So if you're still looking for your distro, keep hopping. Don't settle until you've tried all sorts of different things. Then of course, there's also the package management. How do you manage your packages? How do you manage your distribution? Do you like the command line or do you want to go in and do something in a nice GUI? If you're still figuring that out, that's good. Another reason to hop, if you're having issues in need of solutions, if you're having issues in need of solutions, then you will want to get in there and you will want to hop around and see if there's a distro. Like it or not, not every distro works on every piece of hardware. Even my wonderful Linux Mint, it just doesn't work on absolutely everything. Um, elementary works really well on some hardware, not so well on other hardware. That's one of those things to keep in mind as well. So these are those things to keep in mind. If you're having an issue, 
Research that issue on your particular computer and see if there's a better Linux distribution or a better desktop environment to help you along. So you're still looking for your distro, you're looking to solve your problems, or in my case, I have extra devices. It's not a big deal for me to wipe a device every few, few, um, few weeks. Now, what I actually have is the great portability of Linux is as long as you have that home folder, uh, everything's always saved. <laughs> And so that's the cool part because I can take a copy of my home folder, take the copy of that out, move it onto my server, wipe the Linux distribution, put a new one on, copy the home folder back, reinstall the applications, which takes all of about less than an hour, and then my entire system is back up and running again. But I do that with extra devices so I'm never wasting things because I don't have time if I've jumped to a new distro that's gone crazy, I don't have time to take out of my regular production day to get it working. I need to make sure. And that's why the one computer that I do distro hop on has a backup operating system that I know works. I know it's fine. And if it doesn't, I do have my box of USB drives that has a few other distros on there as well that I can also use those ones. And again, if I'm out of shape, I just... Boot those up, copy the home folder back over, good, we're set, <laughs> all right? Uh, so those are when to hop. When not to hop. Here are the reasons not to distro hop. If your hardware is working well, stop hopping. You have found your golden parachute. Don't jump anymore. It's good. Stick with it. Whether that's elementary or Ubuntu or Linux Mint, unless for some reason you just absolutely abhor the thing, then you could jump. But if everything is working on your hardware, don't jump. Don't jump just because you want to get a better, better experience somewhere else. You want to broaden your horizons. Keep your production computer there. Don't change your production computer if it's working, if it's working. Now, if your workflow and your files are all working, uh, once again, I love the Linux Mint workflow. It is exactly what I want with no exceptions. Well, I guess the one exception, you know, I moved my show desktop from, from the panel on the, you know, on the left side over to the right side where it is on Windows. Perfect. Easy to do. Easy to fix. Everything is working. My files are working. My file manager is working. My panel is working. My applications are working. My programs are working. Everything is working. I'm not touching it. If you have a case where your workflow is working, your hardware is working, do not distro hop. You're going to cause unnecessary stress on your life. Number three, if you only have a single computer, okay, you don't want to be wasting time jumping back and forth on your single or main production computer. The reason I have consistent videos on this channel is because I don't touch my production computers. It works. It's a production computer. It's what I want it to do. And it does what it does very, very, very well. Those are your reasons to hop or not to hop. Well, you got hop or not to hop. To hop, summary, looking for the perfect distro, having hardware issues in need of fixing, or you have extra devices you want to learn, reasons not to hop, everything on your hardware is working well, your workflow is working great, or you only have a limited number of devices. Stop jumping around so much. Just stop jumping around so much. That being said, pretty soon I'm going to wipe Arch off of this guy and install Gen 2. <laughs> I lost my mind. That's going to be calculate most technically. But anyway, that's coming on down the pipeline. So let me know your reasons to hop and your reasons not to hop in the comments down below.